an ink room at Orlando International Airport, this specially equipped 737, a flying laboratory, goes through final checkouts. They're a about, nearby uh, Doppler weather radar station detects thunderstorms in the area. Bad news for most air crews, but a great day to fly for a team of researchers from NASA Langley in Virginia. Their mission, evaluate systems that would warn pilots about approaching wind shear, strong, potentially hazardous currents of air that can accompany storms. The best way to do it, fly right through them. Once airborne, Mike Phillips okay, and Dick Yandy up front uh, turn the 737's controls over to fellow right. NASA pilot right. Lee Purser, right. who flies right. the plane Coming from back the advanced right. research oh, cockpit right. in the right. Liner looks good. Liner Guided right. by displays well, from weather radar on the ground and a variety of on-board sensors, they seek out and fly through areas where a particularly threatening type of wind shear called microbursts are likely to occur. Microbursts are powerful localized downdrafts that can literally knock an unsuspecting plane in the clouds. Into sky during an approach or landing. There we got some turbulence now, we're about three miles short. Mike Lewis is NASA's wind shear program deputy manager. Between 1975 and 85, fully 50% of the aircraft fatalities were either directly or partially caused by, by this wind shear phenomenon. The FAA has mandated that all airliners be equipped with some kind of wind shear advance warning system by 1995. The joint NASA-FAA effort in Orlando marks the culmination of years of study aimed at evaluating candidate technologies. A microwave radar housed in the 737's nose, a Doppler LiDAR under its forward cargo bay, and a side-mounted infrared device. Though each works differently, all three are designed to detect wind shear out ahead of an aircraft. Only by flying through storm cells where microbursts are present can researchers truly test the reliability of the sensors? 0.16 factor. Okay, say so reflectivity, Lincoln. To ensure safety, Mike okay, Lewis evaluates okay. information on the displays and guides the crew away from the wires with hail, ground obstruction, or the dangerously strong winds. Okay, sure. Mike Phillips and Dick Yenny also have recommendations based on what they're seeing yeah, up front and also they fly the plane through the storms. Heavy rain. Altitudes above 750 feet and conservative air speeds are maintained throughout. The task now is to analyze all the information gathered and make it available to the airlines. Program manager Roland Bowles. We think an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. This program is directed at technology that will provide advance warning with ample time for pilots to avoid the affected area or escape from the encounter. Once in place, detectors like those being tested in the NASA FAA program should greatly enhance the safety of air travel, according to veteran pilot Dick Young. With this warning of uh, 30 to 40 seconds, my goodness, there should be no reason whatsoever for a wind shear accident or even an incident. 